All right. Uh, so yeah, I've kind of mentioned this um, in the Ken video, the ML Ken video. Now, <laughs> did I? <clears throat> I don't remember because I, I did that video like a few times over, like three or four times, maybe five. Anyway, the point being, I did that so many times that I'm not sure if in the final one I remember saying uh, whether I was I mentioned uh, Zerato. But yeah, I wanted to talk about Zerato in conjunction with um, ML Ken and all that stuff, and like what how we could balance him out. Um, yeah, so that's what I was going to do today. Uh, I guess before we go over there again, if people want to see summonings, here's the summons at the beginning, so you can like watch this and leave if that's uh, what your main thing is. Um, so we're going to do a few of these. No, not, not these. Uh, a few of these. As you can see here, i got like 10 summons, which is pretty good. Uh, I don't have any of these, but I have some of these. So let's do these. Um, three. Let's try this one first. Ooh, let's see if we get a five star. And more Cherise. Akadis. Akadis is not bad. Uh, oh, we got two four stars there, so I'm probably going to get a four star here. Um, let's find out. Yep, four star. I already more or less have like every four star max, so it is what it is. I'm going to do a few of these. Nothing. Ooh, what's this? We're kind of click. Ooh, what does this mean? Okay, an artifact. Do I have? Is it an artifact I don't have, or is it just a five star artifact? I forgot what I put. Oh, it is new. Okay. That one kind of sucks. I guess if you only want to know it. I think not everybody can really use this. Um. But yeah, so you get that ten percent to all allies, which obviously she can use it, but. She's not as common as someone like um, Yuna, and Yuna's not even that common all her, on her own. Yuna herself isn't even all that common, uh, but you know, Yuna can use this. I think, uh, what's her name? Flan could probably use this just because she's got that non-attack skills, and she's a ranger, so. There you go, you get the barrier. Um, is that really all you get? This is actually pretty bad. This is, like, horrendously bad. Caster's max health, too. Yeah, this is just a really bad artifact. I don't know. Or what's going on with that, but whatever. I guess... I don't suggest turning your five-star artifacts into dust, but... I mean, that one kind of sucks, if we're being honest. Oops, just Christy. The Dragon Maids. <laughs> Touch of Rekos. Uh, I like Touch of Rekos on um, Ruel because Ruel doesn't have any group healing, so she gets hit and then you know you get group healing. But the problem is she like she's too slow, right? You just need more speed on her, and like something like uh, what's it called, the um, Water's Origin is really like what you want to run on on her. But this isn't too bad. I mean, you could probably use this on maybe someone like um, like just a slow unit. Um, what's what's that guy's name? Moonlight Haste, right? If he gets targeted out a lot, then there you go. Of course, Moonlight Haste, you probably want something else on him, but, you know. The point being that Touch of Rekos can work on him, just because he doesn't heal as much. So at least, every time he takes a turn, he's got a little bit of healing to give, right? So, you just keep that in mind. Uh, so yeah, that's that. Um, so I guess if anyone wants to know about this... Uh, like I said, I talked about ML Ken last video, just because, or not last video, the video before last video, just because, I, uh, you know, he was coming up, and, you know, it'd be nice if, like, we got those changes before they put him, they reran him, but again, as it is now, like, they're rerunning him for no reason, because nobody wants ML Ken. Um, again, maybe Chloe has her own problems because of Revive, but otherwise, she's pretty good. Uh, and then, of course, they put the one counter, so, like, they're giving everybody, well, not they're not giving everybody a made Chloe, right, but... They're making Maid Chloe more accessible in this way, and they're giving out the counter to her, and thus making her kind of irrelevant, right? But yeah. I guess if you had to choose between Maid Chloe and Blood Moon Haste, Maid Chloe is probably more useful, because you can actually use her in PvP, or PvP and PvE, uh, but as soon as someone has Blood Moon Haste, they make it irrelevant. So if you just have Blood Moon Haste, all you can use them for is countering Maid, but if you're like in more PvP-related stuff, uh, usually you're probably gonna have somewhere around both. Um, but if you're more in PvP stuff, then like 
countering made Chloe's, you know, more useful just because she's really annoying if you don't have a counter to her. Um, but if you have a counter to her, she just becomes irrelevant. Uh, let's go to... Let's go talk about uh, ML Ken here, or ML um, C Zerato or ML Zerato. As you see, I don't have any gear on him, but I normally keep a lifesteal set on him, um, just for like his heals and whatnot. So let's let's kind of go over his kit. Um, we'll start with the S1. The showcases kind of piss me off because they always start with the S3 or like the S2 if the S2 is the most important part. But I don't know. I like to like build up to like you know the important stuff, right? So it's like, here's this awesome S3. Well, let's build up to that. Let's hold that off until, you know, we go over the first skills. But that's just me. Um, so yeah, we'll start with this one. Um, one of the fun things about Zerato is like his whole kit is actually kind of like, it's all interesting in how it plays into each other. So, you know, like I said, uh, this, yeah, this effect will, when he uses it, it takes two debuffs off himself and throws them onto the enemy. And he also gains health off of this. Uh, health is based off his max HP. Now, his S2 is arguably his most important um, skill, so we'll probably save that one. And his S3 is relatively simple. Uh, he just AoEs, um, decrease attack, and you know defense break, as well as giving himself defense buff. 20% chance to ignore, or 20 souls to ignore effect resistance. However, it is a 75% chance, so you've just got a flat 25% chance to miss, period, right? Um, so yeah, that's that's you know that's that. So now we look at like the main, this is because again, this is good, this is great actually, and this is actually pretty great, right? So these two skills are great. Unlike ML Ken, where ML Ken is only his S2, these are actually pretty great. Would he be used without this S2? I don't know if he had a different S2 or something, I'm not sure. It, like it had to be, it'd be kind of weird to see what, how you use him without the S2. Um, but like ML Ken, his S2 is basically the majority of what makes Champion Zerato so worth using. So for the first part, he's immune to stun, sleep, and... Uh, hit chance. This wording here is not is improper. I think now this is just a semantics thing. But personally, and we'll talk about we'll talk about why this is really bad when we talk about his kit. But you know, like I said, so this is just a semantics thing that kind of annoys me, or just like I mean, it straight up pisses me off, basically. Um, but again, now we go back to the, to the important part: is that he has a hundred percent chance to counterattack when the caster is being debuffed. When the caster is debuffed after being attacked, right? So it gives him 100% chance to counter when he's debuffed. That's basically, you know, it's as simple as it gets. So what do you use Champion Zerato for? You bring him into teams where you're going to get a lot of debuffs, and he's just going to, like, constantly be throwing them back and um, surviving because he's got his own HP here and all that stuff, right? Um, so now let's talk about, like, what what's kind of wrong with this kit and what's going on with, like, Zerato. So... First of all, there's really nothing. There's nothing wrong with this skill at all. Like this skill is basically about as good as it's going to get. Um, would you prefer to have 100% chance on this? Yes. However, um, you usually build Zerato slow, so he's going to take his turn at some point, and the defense break is kind of like it's a nice to have. It's not important, right? Um, the S1 is actually pretty good. The health regain wasn't added until a bit later. But it's basically double health regain because he hits two targets because this cleaves. I, I guess I didn't mention that the first time. But this cleaves, so that's a good thing. Um, it also duplicates the debuffs. So if you have two debuffs, it's not like one debuff on one person and one debuff on another person. This duplicates that debuff to make sure both receive um, both of them, right? So both people get two debuffs. So you're basically spreading four debuffs with one attack, right? Theoretically, right? Um, yeah, so this is, again, there's really not a whole lot that's wrong with this ability. Um, again, I, I enjoy, I like the fact that they gave him lifesteal on this, or not lifesteal, yeah, I guess lifesteal, but, um, and then you can add lifesteal on top of that for another 20%, and he, it gives him pretty good tanking ability, right? Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of like, and then his imprint gives him effectiveness, which is pretty decent. You don't really want to focus on effectiveness too much on him, like effectiveness have 50% already. This is basically kind of more or less what you want. Um, if you, you can go higher, you can go like 100 maybe, or 80 80 is probably the max I'd go. But again, the thing with Zerato is that most of his problems don't come from his kit. They come from his four-star status. Like, his stats are really low. So you're basically stretching the maximum potential of all your gear. Like, you really need a lot of health. You really need a lot of defense. You need a lot of attack. You need a lot of crit chance, a lot of crit damage, right? So you need all these things to make him. And then, again, on top of that, you need some effectiveness. Fortunately, like I said, he's got 23% here. Um, but yeah, so you really need... 
basically every stat on Zerato except for speed, right? Um, to really make him effective. Now, what I think, again, so now let's go back to why I was kind of complaining about this um, S2 here. The problem with Zerato is that there's a lot of times where he doesn't get debuffed when he should get debuffed, right? Like, you can't bring him into stuns, sleeps, and decrease hit chances because he's not going to do anything. The wording on this should say, is in, like, can't be debuffed by these things because that'd be accurate. If he was immune to them, I would prefer if that was true. I would prefer if it was true that he was immune to stun. That way he can be stunned and still act while he's stunned. That way he can be sleep, he slept and still act while he slept, right? I would like those D these debuffs to stick on him, especially this decreased hit chance. I mean, these I can understand why you wouldn't, but this decreased hit chance at least, I would prefer they stick onto him and have him transfer. Like, I mean, how, how amazing would it be to just have Zerato throw back a stun and then stun somebody, right? But yeah, that, that's kind of my main problem with this. He's not immune to these debuffs. He just can't be debuffed by them. Like, they can't be applied, right? So it's just a, a preventative measure, measure not, an, in, not an immunization. Uh, but like I said, that's just a semantics thing. Um, immunity means, like, you can get that stuff on you, and it's not going to affect you. So he can have stun, but it won't affect him. And I would really much prefer that, just because just it would open his... Because right now... Like it would open his usefulness, right? So when you're fighting against something like, um, what's her name? So I don't have her actually. I'm looking for her, but I don't have her. Uh, if you're fighting against like Solitaria, or you're fighting against, where is he? It's um, a good point. Where is he? You're fighting against Ball, right? He, he Champion Zerato has no like. He can't do anything against Ball if they bring him in because, for one, uh, you, you can't do anything because for one, sleep. It has no effect. You just get slept and it's like, whatever, who cares, right? Like, everyone else gets slept except Zerato and he's just sitting there with no debuffs, right? So it allows people to, like, play around him by bringing just units who, like, aren't affected by anything he's doing, right? Um, so yeah, that's kind of my main thing. So sleep, stuns, again, like Dizzy. Again, it, you, you kind of neuter Dizzy by not letting her S3 if you bring Zerato. But... Everyone else in your team can get stunned, and you can just beat up Zerato, right? He's not that hard to deal with without the counterattack mechanic. Now, unlike with ML Ken, where I complained about, like, to no end, I complained about this 30% chance to counterattack, I would really prefer that on Zerato. Just have him a free, just give him free 30% chance to counter, because it would make him a little more useful outside of his dealing with uh, debuffers, and it would make it, again, so one of the bigger problems is, is more... Um, What's the word? Environmental or meta-based. Um, and I guess we can kind of go into them. So like I said, Zerato's kit is great. I mean, he's a fun unit to use. I love using him. I used to love using him. I don't, you know, I moved his gear. I moved his gear to someone else. I'm going to put it back. I moved it to the new water lady with the counters just because it kind of matched, obviously. Uh, I'm going to put it back on him, though, because she's not very useful. I just was using her to level up. Um, friendship, anyway. Uh, but the point being that um, the idea was that I was going to... Um, talk about like like the meta has changed around him like i said i, I really enjoy using zerato zerato is a lot of fun but the problem is you don't in the meta there's not enough debuffing going on now you say to me but you know ran and um pieria and all these units like uh, the bomb lady all these units are running around out here uh with deep with debuffs all over the place what are you talking about the point I'm making is that they're not enough debuffs. Zerato needs to be thrown into a team where it's like four of their units are debuffing. Because if it's only two, those two units don't, like, Ran only has debuffs on his S3. Once those are gone, not to mention he gives out immunity, right? So Zerato's going to throw them back and not do anything. And then he's going to die because Ran has defense break, right? Again, Pieria is the same way where, like, you throw debuffs on him and then that's basically it. Because her S1 is a stun. And you can run a whole team of guys that don't have debuffs. So you're not going to bring Zerato into a team that only has a Pieria because that's dumb. That's not going to accomplish anything. He's not going to do anything. Uh, and you're wasting a slot, right? So my point being that like, if they slightly boost Zerato's usefulness, it won't make him all round useful. You're not going to bring Zerato into a team that has no debuffs. That's still not going to happen. But if you give him that 30% counter into his S2 it makes him more useful against lower debuff teams. Again, people run debuffs for the bare minimum. They run 
uh, Basar. I mean, no one runs Basar anymore, but you know what I mean. They run Basar, and all Basar has is the the deep the buff break, right? The buff block, or whatever. Um, and that's I mean that's it. Once he does that, I mean Basar can just S one until he has his S three up again. And the CR push is the most important part of that kid anyway. Um, the CR the CR and the strip. Again, Ran is just, is just the Ran and Pierre are just the fastest strippers that go into some debuffs. The debuffs themselves don't really care or don't really matter all that much, right? Um, not to mention, again, like I said, the fact that Ran throws on defense break is one of Zerato's major weaknesses because he's going to put immunity up, defense break Zerato, and then what? Zerato is going to throw it back, but they have all they all have immunity, so it's stuck on him. And then someone else is just going to like sneeze at him, and he's going to die because, again, you have to invest in a lot of speed. You know, a lot of speed. You have to invest in a lot of health, defense, and attack for him. So he's not going to be as tanky as you want him to be. He's not going to be as tanky as you want him to be because you still need damage. And you can't make him do enough damage because you still need him to be tanky, right? Um, so that's kind of the main point. was like the idea of dealing with the debuffs that are in the meta, Zerato has kind of fallen off, right? Because no one's running like pure debuff teams anymore. Um, and no one ever really ran pure debuff teams, but like... You need people to run more than what they're currently running for Zerato to be useful. Because I said, they could bring in Ran or Pieria and one other. Like, usually it's, it's Ran, Pieria, and, and like maybe Cerise. I don't, Cerise has kind of fallen off, so no one really cares. But they've run those in addition to like um, Caesarea or something like that, right? So it's just one. It's just only two. And then that leaves your whole three other slots open to whatever you want, right? And they run, you know, they can run anything. They can run um, any damage dealer they want. They can do whatever they want, right? So pay attention when you play RTA, you know, look at the kind of units they're choosing. When people bring debuffers, they're just bringing like two debuffers, like the bare minimum, and then bringing in a bunch of other damage, and Zerato can't survive that other damage. And that's kind of, so that's my main point, right? It's just that aspect of it. Like, you need to broaden, you need to let, you need to make Zerato not be so hyper focused. I was going to say fixated, and then I said focused. Um, hyper focused on one specific thing. So kind of broaden him out a little bit, make him a little more, little more useful than he currently is, but it's not gonna, I mean, it's not gonna break him. Having a 30% chance to just counter in his kid is not gonna like suddenly make him overpowered. Um, yeah, cause I mean like nobody runs Zerato on a counter set anyway. I mean, some people do, but I mean, that's just a dumb set. Like anyway, the point being, um, I think that would be a market improvement on him because again, his S1 actually benefits a lot more than someone like ML Ken's S2 or ML Ken's S1 because you don't build crit or anything on Ken and I already kind of explained that in that video but yeah like I said so that might be a good solution maybe don't even give him 30 give him 20 or something like give him you know just give him something honestly like if we're, if we're being honest just give him something uh, the other thing that I wanted to those are the two main um, points I wanted to talk about on his kit uh, well I only had two main points right so the first one was again maybe give him a little bit of counter attack chance built into this outside of this one the conditional one and uh what I think is probably give him defense scaling. The same way, where is she, the, the water lady here has uh, her. Because as soon as I saw her, I was like, yeah, she basically has everything that Zerato should have. I mean, not everything, but uh, the defense scaling would be way better on Zerato because you already build a lot of defense on him and a lot of health and all that stuff anyway. Um, you don't want to go full HP just because he, he heals on his own HP, Caster's max, max HP. Doesn't mean you want to build full HP. You kind of want to balance between HP and, and defense because, again, as I, I say, I repeat this a lot, but life scale scales better with um, defense. Um, yeah. So those are my two main, like, additions. You don't even have to put the defense scaling on this. You can leave it here. You can put it here. You can take it off. Um, and, but at least put it on this. Now, again, defense scaling is going to fix his damage. Um, it's going to make it a lot better. Granted, and you can kind of build him a little easier to make him more tanky, so that way he gets more tankiness and and um, offensive capabilities. But it's not gonna like make him broken. He's still got the problem of having four star stats, right? He's still a four star, and again, he's still not uncounterable. And he's only again, you're only making him better. You're only broadening his niche a little bit. However, the point being that that's still a niche, right? Broadening your very specific task still makes you apt at that specific task and not much else, but at least it's slightly broader, right? So those are the two main uh, aspects of, of Zerato that I think would probably change him for the better. Um, not that, I mean, anyone's hurting for Zerato, but I think having Zerato 
counter some of the more you know like i said the the p areas and the and the rands and all these like you know um Cisaria. uh and having her, him deal with that meta a little bit would be kind of useful um because i mean he used to do it back then it was he did pretty good at it back then but now he's you know like i said he's falling off just because you can you can just put immunity and defense break zerato all at once with one unit and then he's just dead in one turn right so take that as you will um in terms of, I guess we can talk about like how you build Zerato. Now, like I said, there's two basic builds you can run on him. You can either run Life Steal or you can run Counter Set. Some people like Counter Set because it gives you a bit more damage and makes him a little more useful outside of that, you know, very specific niche. Um, it, or kind of, like I said, it broadens his niche a little bit. Um, and like I said, you know, this health recovery, it, this already has health recovery built into here. Uh, but the thing I kind of want to like mention is the fact that like when you run counter set, like I've run him on counter set and I've run him on life steal set. The counter set does not give you enough stats to make Zerato worth it anyway, and he dies too fast because his life steal off of this is very it's it's minimal. It's nice to have, but it's not good. With life steal set, he has enough life steal that he can survive like the entire match, right? Like that's kind of the bottom line there. Um, so that's why I like the lifesteal set on him. It just gives him more survivability. And again, you don't want to bring him in situations where he's not going to counter, where he's not going to get debuffed, right? So like if you, the thing with Zerato is that, again, that meta problem. Going into the, going into the match, you need to go in assuming he's going to be able to get this off as much as possible. So if I'm ever relying on the counter set, the 30% to go off, then I've already lost that match or... Yeah, I've already kind of lost that match, and Zerato was already kind of like... Going, I'm going into that with a defeatist mentality. I shouldn't bring him into places he's not suited for, right? That's kind of something... Again, people who run him on counter are people are usually people who aren't that attuned to, um, to RTA, right? And RTA, unit selection is very important. Every unit needs to count. And if you're bringing Zerato into a place where you're like, well, he's going to get debuffed, but I'd also like some counters to come from counter set when he doesn't have debuffs on him then you've already kind of lost that match if you have that mentality don't bring zerato into things he's not going to succeed in and if you're assuming he's going to succeed only 70 60 50 percent of the time and he has to fall back on the built-in counter on the on this counter set then you've already kind of wasted your time right especially especially if since he's a four star when you already you already got that deficit of him being a four star and now you're adding in um bringing him into less than ideal conditions you you're kind of defeating the purpose of him right um, like I said, these buffs are not to make him just more powerful overall. They're just here to give him, uh, to broaden his specificity. Right now he's too specific. There's too many, situ there's, there's not enough situations you can use him in, basically. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of that. Uh, like I said, so, like I said, that's why I think lifesteal is the best for him. I think, uh, giving him the healing on this, uh, healing on this would be, is good. And yeah, just general. Well, that's how I run him. Um, I usually run him at like 16k HP, and like I don't know, I don't remember how much I had, how much defense I had, like 12k or no, was it 16k defense? Yeah, 16k defense, like 16k HP. Ah, I have no idea. I can't remember. I have the gear. I can just go throw it on him real quick. Um, for anybody who wants to see this, what a decently built. And I don't really run him on like the best gear. Let's see, let's see what he looked like. Who has? Oh, I run him on a counter on a crit chance set so i run him on crit chance again you don't need immunity you can run if you have enough crit chance in your gear you can run him on an effectiveness set and that's probably going to be your best bet in that situation um I, I used to run this on him but i threw it on her so i'm probably going to figure out we'll just throw that on him and just to, just to know what i used to run on him um we had a good uh crit damage necklace but now we're kind of stuck with this no yeah i don't know where that yeah that who was, who was wearing this before him? Someone else was. It wasn't that before. Uh, and then I actually run a defense. And I'm, again, this might be my own bias of like why I want him to scale with defense. You can have him scale with HP, but I just, I don't know. For some reason, I just like the fact that I saw uh, this new girl with the um, defense scaling. It just, to me, it kind of clicked. I was like, well, I feel like that should probably be what Zerato does. Uh, so here's kind of what I run. So 16K defense, um, almost 15K HP. Are 1.6k defense and 15k almost 15k HP, uh, and yeah. So like I said, my my effectiveness isn't really that high. I think 50 is fine. Um, 
and you kind of want some debuffs to stick on him, right? Because if he if he if he if he throws them back every time and they they they're not resisted, he won't have de defense. He won't have um he won't have debuffs on him to throw back later, right? So you you kind of valuing the the counter attack chance a lot. Um, so yeah, this is kind of what I run him on. I'm probably gonna throw all this gear on him except for this chest, so I'll have to figure out what to do with that. But like I said, you don't need immunity. You don't really need um what's it called? Yeah, you don't need immunity. You don't really need uh. Uh, what's like effectiveness you can run effectiveness set if you want like I said that's, that's nothing wrong with that um, but yeah there's not a whole lot of you can run what else can you run you can run again if they do decide to scale him with defense or something or HP you can run one of these two sets obviously you don't need effectiveness set uh, unity set I mean I guess you can't run pen set unfortunately because all his attacks are AOE um, yeah that's basically it I mean that's all your choices so personally I run crit chance like I said I run crit chance set on him because you're already stretching your that your your thats your stats so thin you kind of need to like you know you got to run something, um, and even then a lot of people recommend you run um, 100 percent crit chance. I think if you you can probably run him on like 80 or something like that because he's got a, he's got cleaving um, AOE's S, uh, cleaving abilities so um, he hits two people with the S1 or all all the whole team with the S3. You can kind of run a little less crit chance on someone like that, but again, it's up to you whether you want to see those crits all the time. Um, so you can run a little less crit chance to sacrifice for other stats as well. Um, yeah, so like I said, most of the time, especially like you don't need that much attack, but if you're not focusing enough on attack, it, it, you can really tell when you're not like, when your attack kind of like is really low. Um, because again, like you'll be fighting against Ran and Ran is squishy. Ran is like maximum speed investment. And you hit Ran back, and if you don't have enough attack, you only do like 10% of his HP, and like, what the hell is that, right? So where I had him right there, he kind of hit Ran back for almost like a third, maybe half of his HP. Um, but yeah, so that's that. Again, if you're going to run Serato, like, you got to make sure you put him in proper situations. Um, what else? Yeah, here, we can go take a look here. What I do run, what I run him on as a mage here as his main build i used to run him on a yellow's violin um because it's important to take off the immunity it gives you more chances to throw debuffs onto the enemy um but like i said even this is kind of like lackluster on him it's like really annoying to have to like again ran i, I mentioned ran a lot but ran kind of killed like zerato's meta um you can kind of clear that but you have to hit him twice right and you like if they hit you once Rand's going to hit you once, put the defense break on you, and then someone else is going to hit you again, and they're just going to kill you because you have defense broken, right? Um, what was the other one? So I usually ran that. Um, some people like, uh, where is it? Some people like this. I've seen this on people on some people's builds. Um, Caladra, I guess, is fine if you work, since you're working on that. I see it right here. That's the main one. You could run this um, non-critical hit. You get a counter attack chance. I mean, that's fine, I guess. If you it, like, you can run this and a life steal set, right? You basically got counter set. Um, this one here, you can kind of run this on him because he won't take a lot of turns fast. So every time he takes a turn, he'll lose like. Oh, every time he attacks, actually. Never mind, I misread that. I thought it was a turn. So no, that's actually not very good on him. Um, what does this do? Yeah, this is kind of dumb too. Um, so yeah, personally, I would either just go with Ayala's Violin, or my personal favorite is actually um, Fairy Tale Nightmare, or whatever. Um, I like the 100% chance to just deal this extra free damage because, like I said, you're pushing, you're stretching a lot of stats on Zerato, and having a bunch of true damage here um, is pretty good. It's pretty, it's pretty nice, I think. Um, and secondly, um, this 60% chance to dispel one debuff or one buff, right? So you basically get the bust of both worlds. You get this with a little more damage, right? Because you get that 1,000, right? Um, so, yeah, take that as you will. Uh, what else? Is that it? Yeah, that's mainly it. So th that's my build. That's how I run him. Um, those are the suggestions, I think, that we could improve on him. Like I said, to summarize, um, maybe add him, give him some kind of extraneous scaling. So personally, I think defense would be best, but, you know, HP wouldn't be too bad either. Um, and then lastly... Uh, Give him like a counterattack chance in here somewhere, right? Give him something. Because uh, again, let's go over here, right? They gave. Like, here's a four star. They gave her 25% chance free to counter, right? On top of like this entire kit that just got 
like remangled. I mean, this is the same. But like now she does this. Now this is an AOE stun, right? Like, and this same skill also has 20% damage reduction on all units for single target, right? So like I said, it's not necessarily to come compare them like apples to apples or whatever, but like, if they can do that for Armin, I think just giving, you know, him at least a little bit of like, you know, counterattack chance, sprinkle it in here and then give him some kind of alternate scaling, I think would be, you know, pretty good. Uh, of course, we're still waiting on the um, Cesarato exclusive equipment, which should be coming soon at some point, hopefully. That's the main one I'm hoping for. Um, what, I mean, what could they do? Probably, uh, like I said, I mean, one of these is probably going to give him counterattack chance. So maybe one of them will be like, okay, that'll, that'll fix this problem of like, okay, now he has like 20% chance or something like that. Or 15. I mean, like like I said, anything other than zero would be nice. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of it for today, my main video. Um, yeah, I'm not sure who the next character is going to be. Like I said, I mentioned Zerato in the ML Ken video, but, you know, <laughs> I don't know who's... Th that's basically like there's not a whole lot of other characters I care about like there's not a whole lot of other characters I want to be in the meta like obviously you know like Angelica's not in the meta but like I don't care right <laughs> I don't care enough like Rem isn't in the meta but obviously she's not built for that but like you know I really don't care either way um I might go over like the the specialty changes and what they need to be better and like improvements that we can do going forward to like have them be more impactful in the meta um but I don't know we'll we'll we'll, we'll see that again I don't even have Chaos Inquisitor, like, I don't like to talk about units I don't use, right? I've never used this guy, so it's kind of hard to talk about him. Like, like Ken, Champion Zerato, and Dilibet, they're all units that I have used, and I enjoy, like, their kits and how they work, so, you know. I usually, it usually takes time for me to, like, get ideas and, like, think about how to do them. But yeah, so that's it. Until next time.